Today I want to look at a nice approach for finding the antiderivative of the natural log function. And this can be extended, or this method can be extended to finding antiderivatives of a few other inverse functions, like the inverse tangent function, the inverse sine function, and probably some others. So we'll probably do this with the natural log and the inverse tangent, and then maybe as a homework exercise you could do this with the inverse sine function. And maybe before we get started, I'd like to recall finding antiderivatives of inverse functions generally requires us to use integration by parts. And here we're not going to use any integration by parts. Okay, so let's get to it. So we're going to start by taking this antiderivative and write it in a way that it looks like a definite integral, but in fact, it's maybe like just a more proper way of writing an antiderivative. So I'm going to write this as the integral from a up to x of the natural log of t dt. And here I should say that a is really any positive number. I think you could probably extend this to a being equal to zero, but in that case you would need to do something with an improper integral and some limits given the fact that natural log of x is improper or discontinuous at a equals zero or x equals zero. Okay, so the main thing that we're going to do here is replace our natural log function with its integral representation. So let's do that. So I can write this as the integral from a up to x and then the integral from 1 up to t of 1 over u du dt. Okay, so let's include a little bit of color coding here. And notice I'm putting these green parentheses around this integral from 1 to t of 1 over u du, and that's in fact the integral representation of this natural log of t. Okay, great. And then, well, what makes this whole thing work is doing a change of order of integration. So let's maybe make a picture of that so we know what's going on. So let's say t is right here, and this is the u axis. Observe that here, u is being integrated from 1 up to t, so we need the line on here, which is the u equals t line. So I'll just put that right here. And like I said, this is the t equals u or the u equals t line. Okay, and then notice that the t values are going between a and x. So let's maybe put t equals a right here, and we'll put t equals x out here. And then while we're at it, we're also going to need the u equals 1 line, which is going to be a horizontal line, so I'll put that like this. So here's our line, which is u equals 1. Okay, so let's draw this region of integration. So it's gonna be this little like quadrilateral that looks like this. So it looks like a bit of a triangle that has been cut. And because we'll kind of need this for our calculation, let's point out that this point up here is the coordinate x comma x, whereas this coordinate right here is the, comma, the coordinate a comma a, and of course, this is going to be the coordinate a comma 1, and then this is going to be the coordinate x comma 1. So that's going to be pretty useful. Okay, so let's see how we can switch the order of integration. So let's observe that we're going to kind of need to split this into two parts. So let's maybe put a line right here, and we're going to split it into this blue rectangular part. And then after that, this thing that I'm cross-shading in magenta, magenta triangular part. Okay, so let's write the blue part down first. Okay, so let's see. We'll have the integral, and then in the integral, we have 1 over u dt du. So let's see. The t values in this case go between a and x. So here I can write t is trending from a to x. And then the u values are trending, let's see, from 1 to a. So this goes from 1 to a. So that wasn't tricky at all because, check it out here, we just have a rectangle. And maybe we'll color code this. This bit is from that blue rectangle. And then to that, we need to add 
well, the magenta and green triangle. So it's going to be the double integral 1 over u dt du. But now let's observe that the t values are going from u up to x. So it's slightly different because now we've got a variable in that lower bound. And then after that, the u values are going from, let's see, it'll be a up to x. So here we have this is going from a to x. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And now let's maybe bring that over here and see what we get. So we have the natural log of x dx is now expressed as the sum of these two integrals. So 1 to a, and then we have a to x, and 1 over u dt du plus the integral a to x, and then the integral u up to x of 1 over u dt du. But let's notice that the inner integral in both of these cases is with respect to t, whereas our function on the inside is only a function of u, which is constant with respect to t. So in that case, it's a really simple integral. So let's see what that'll leave us with. We'll have our integral from 1 up to a, and then we'll have, let's see what it'll be. It'll be t over u. We need to evaluate that from a up to x. And then we have a du. And then here we have plus the integral from a to x. And then it'll be another t over u. We need to evaluate that from u up to x. And then it'll be du. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. Now let's plug in those endpoints and see what we get. So here we have this integral from 1 to a, and we're going to have x over u minus a over u du. And then here we have plus, this is going to be the integral from a to x, and then we're going to have x over u, and, and then minus the number 1 du. Okay, so I think, I think we're looking pretty good so far. And now we can do this inside integral, which is with respect to u. So let's see, that's going to give us x times the natural log of u minus a times the natural log of u. We need to evaluate that from 1 up to a. And then here we need to add this to x times the natural log of u minus u evaluated from a up to x. So now let's do these evaluations and see what we get. So this for this first bit, we'll have x natural log of a minus a natural log of a. And from that, we need to subtract what we get from plugging in the number 1. But that's 1 wherever we see u, but the natural log of 1 is 0, so that just cancels. And then we need to plug in x here, so that's going to give us plus x natural log of x minus x. And then we need to subtract what we get from plugging a in. So that'll be x natural log of a and then minus a. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And now let's see some cancellation that occurs. Observe that we've got an x natural log of a here, which will cancel with an x natural log of a here. And then we can maybe recombine some stuff and observe that we have x natural log of x minus x. And then we'll have plus a minus a times natural log of a. But in fact, we can take this a times natural log of a and set it equal to an arbitrary constant c. And, and we've come up with the well-known formula for the antiderivative of the natural log. So here we have it. We have the antiderivative of the natural log is x natural log of x and then plus this constant c. Okay, so let's see if this works with the inverse tangent. So now we're going to use the same method to find the antiderivative of the inverse tangent. But in this case, we're going to simplify our lives a little bit and just find an antiderivative. And so it'll be up to a constant from any antiderivative. So before we actually had an arbitrary constant in terms of the natural log of a in that case. But in fact, we can save ourselves some headache if we just pick that value of a to be nice and then recognize that we're doing everything up to that constant. Okay, so anyway, let's get to it. So we'll start by writing this as the integral from 0 to x of the arctan of t dt. 
And then we'll do the same kind of thing that we did before. We'll replace inverse tangent with its integral representation. So here we've got the integral from zero to x, and then after that, the integral from zero to t of one over u squared plus one du dt. Okay, but now our region of integration is a little bit simpler to work with. So let's make a picture of what's going on here. Let's again say that this is the t-axis and this is the u-axis. So we're gonna need a line on here, which is u equals t again. And now observe that the u values are going between um, 0 and t, and the t values are going between 0 and x. So we're going to need an x here, send that up, and the region that we're integrating over is this bit that I'm shading in brown. So this is an easier one to switch the order of bounds of integration. Observe that this will be the integral from zero to x, and then the integral from u up to x of one over u squared plus one dt du. Just because we're parametrizing this region in the opposite order. Okay, great. But now what we can do is observe this one over u squared plus one is a constant with respect to t. So that antiderivative is pretty straightforward. We have the integral from zero up to x of t over u squared plus one evaluated from u up to x du. So let's see what that leaves us with. We'll have our integral from a up to x. Plugging in x, we'll have x over u squared plus one. Plugging in u, that'll be minus u over u squared plus one. And then this is all du now. And this should be uh, integral starting at zero. Now, now we can take the antiderivative of both of those with respect to u fairly easily. So let's see, that'll give us x arctan of u minus, that's actually going to be something like 1 half natural log of u squared plus 1. If we did a substitution for the denominator, notice that essentially the derivative of the denominator is part of the numerator there. Okay. Now we need to evaluate this from zero up to x. So evaluating it at x gives us x arctan of x minus half natural log of x squared plus one. Evaluating it at zero here gives us zero, just because natural log of one is zero and inverse tangent of zero is zero. So perhaps we would just add our constant of integration back in, keeping in mind that it was not present for all of the steps in between. We're simply adding it back in because now we've got our final solution. The antiderivative of the arctan of x is this nice expression down here. Now, I think a nice homework exercise here would be to do this for perhaps the integral of the arc sine of x. Although I'm sure you could choose a lot of different integrals or antiderivatives, I should say, of inverse functions that are easily representable themselves by integrals to use this technique. And that's a good place to stop.